Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate, and this week I'm wearing Taylor Swift merch. And I know, I know from the YouTube comments that many of you vocally do not care for Miss Swift, but she's my favorite and her new album, Lover, is out now, and this is my show, and so I'm gonna stand who I want. I'm just kidding, but yeah, I, I am wearing the merch. Anyway, enough of all of that. Let's get into this week's latest dev news. So first up, just a reminder that Microsoft Ignite is coming up and it'll be taking place in Orlando, Florida from November 4th through the 8th, 2019. And I'll be there along with many of your other Channel 9 favorites. And this is one of Microsoft's biggest conferences of the year for IT pros and developers. And there's going to be tons of amazing content. Registration is open now. Um, and and so the link is down below in the show notes and I hope to see you there. And side note, if you do see me at Ignite or at any other events, even out in the wild, just please say hello because I love meeting people who watch our shows. Next up, in some browser news, we've got a slew of updates for the next version of Microsoft Edge. So, as we've discussed, the next iteration of Microsoft Edge will actually be based on the Chromium open source project, and it's been in various preview stages for the last couple of months. Well, now the Edge team has released beta builds for Microsoft Edge for both Mac and Windows, and these builds will be updated every six weeks. Currently, the Canary builds are updated daily, and the dev builds are updated weekly. Um, and so this beta build should be super stable. And this also means that we're inching even closer to a full release of the new Microsoft Edge, which I'm honestly really, really loving. So I've got a link to the announcement blog in the show notes in the description down below. And one of the big new features now is that users of uh, Microsoft, users who have Microsoft Work or School accounts can now sign into Edge to sync their favorites and passwords across various machines. And so I've got a link to a blog post about that down below too. And for Edge Canary testers, you can now enable the new collections feature in the flags. And so I've got a link to that blog post as well. Collections are an awesome way to save groups of web pages and you can export them to an Excel file or copy and paste them into Word or run OneNote or something else. And it's a really great feature and I actually used it this week to get my links and stories for the show. So please check that feature out. And my final Edge note for this week, uh, the Microsoft Edge team did an AMA on Reddit on Thursday answering questions from the community. And so I've also got a link down below to the AMA thread. Next up, in some GitHub news, it is back to school season, and that means that the GitHub Student Developer Pack is back. And so verified students who join the pack will get GitHub Pro for free while they're in school, and they also get a slew of credits and discounts and free access from tons of different partners, including Microsoft Azure, Gitpod, Frontend Masters, Name.com, DigitalOcean, and more. And I said this on Twitter, but i, I legit serious. Looking at all these offers and all this free stuff is almost enough for me to want to go back to grad school. Almost. A link uh, to the GitHub blog outlining the new student pack and a link to sign up are in the links in the description down below. In some Azure Functions news, Python support for Azure Functions has officially gone GA. And if you're not familiar, Azure Functions is Azure's serverless platform where you can run your own bits of code without having to worry about the underlying infrastructure. And um, uh, the Python support has been in preview for quite some time, uh, but now that it's generally available, you can develop Python 3.6 apps to run the cross-platform open source Functions 2.0 runtime. And these can be published as uh, code or Docker containers to a Linux-based serverless hosting platform using Azure. And so I've got a link to the blog post outlining the GA announcement, as well as links to some getting started guides for Azure Functions in Python using both the command line and Visual Studio Code in the description and show notes down below. And Speaking of the command line, PowerShell 7 Preview 3 is out now. And so back in May, we talked about how the new PowerShell roadmap, the TLDR basically is that with PowerShell 7, PowerShell Core is essentially becoming PowerShell. So there's just one PowerShell from now on. And PowerShell 7 will be a long-term service or LTS release. And that'll be supported as long as .NET Core 3.1 is supported. And one of the main goals of PowerShell 7 is to make it a viable replacement for Windows PowerShell 5.1 in production. And the team has been making really great progress towards reaching that goal. And so PowerShell 7 uh, Preview 3 is built on the latest version of .NET Core 3.0 Preview 8. And that's made it possible to make a large number of PowerShell modules that ship with Windows compatible. There are a ton more details. Um, I've got a link to the blog post outlining the changes down below. And don't fret, you can have PowerShell 7 Preview installed alongside Windows PowerShell 
and even PowerShell Core 6. And uh, one new feature I do want to mention is that if you are a Mac or a Linux user, you can now add PWSH as the login shell, and it'll work the same as the born shell in terms of login environment. So that's really awesome. In some Xamarin news, Xamarin Forms 4.2.0 nice, is uh, now in GA. And so I've got a link to the release notes and the blog post announcement in the show notes below. And in some Visual Studio for Mac news, there's a great new tutorial on their blog about creating games using Visual Studio for Mac and Unity. And it's a really great read. And so I've got a link to that down below too. And in some Web Template Studio news, the interns over at Microsoft Garage created the Web Template Studio project. And this is basically a riff on the Win Windows Template Studio project. And it just hit version 2.0. And it's totally open source. It's great. And what it is is Web Template Studio is a VS Code extension that makes it super easy to bootstrap a web app. And so you can choose from React or Vue or Angular on the front end and Flask or Express on the back end. And there are even pre-built page templates that you can add as well. And the new release adds the ability to um, add in automatic support for publishing to Microsoft Azure um, using App Service or to use a Cosmos DB database with your app. And I love this project. And I think it's a really great way to create an MVP web app without a lot of fuss. And so I really look forward to it growing. And so I've got a link to the blog post, the extension, and the GitHub repo down below. On Channel 9 this week, we've got lots of great content. And first up on the Xamarin show, James shows off XAML hot reload for Xamarin Forms, which is now in preview. And then on Azure Friday, Donovan and Ziv talk about Azure dedicated host. And finally, on the AI show, Seth looks at the new anomaly detector service and how you can use it on premise with container support. And so links to all these videos are in the show notes in the description down below. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So look, frequent viewers will be expecting me to pick Taylor Swift's latest album, Lover, available now. And I will be honest that this was my first impulse. However, in the spirit of giving the people what they want, and what I know you all want is just nerdy nostalgia, I want to give a shout out to Scott Hanselman, who's everyone's favorite developer, on a blog post that he published last week. And quick aside, I refer to Scott as everyone's favorite developer, both because it is true and because I like having something to call back every couple of shows. This is nothing but love for Scott, genuinely. He's the best. Anyway, Scott posted a blog last week reminiscing about Microsoft Encarta, which was the CD-ROM encyclopedia to end all CD-ROM encyclopedias. And as a kid, I loved Encarta. And because I had Encarta before I had the full internet, I used to spend hours and hours on my home computer reading and watching the videos and animations inside the app. And like, realistically, like legit, honestly, as great as Wikipedia is, and it's awesome, I really hate that kids today don't know the power of having a multimedia access to things like maps or to view postage stamp uh, videos of famous speeches or world events. Now, my personal favorite, Microsoft CD-ROM, and really CD-ROM in general, was Cinemania, which was kind of a visual IMDb. I would love to hear your memories of your favorite CD-ROMs, Microsoft or otherwise, in the comments down below. And feel free to share your uh, thoughts about any of the other stories that we discussed this week. That does it for me. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. And go ahead and subscribe to our channel, Microsoft Developer, for all of your nerdy dev news with a side of nostalgia and a small dose of Taylor Swift. See you next time 